Welcome back to our Victoria Falls and East Africa adventure with Scenic. From Kenya's legendary Masai Mara region, we've headed northeast to another of this country's fine national parks, Lake Nakuru. Nakuru is the Maasai word for dust. I mean, who has a dusty lake, for goodness sake? But that ain't the only oddity here in the Lake Nakuru National Park. The lake is sometimes pink. The flamingos are a reddish purple because they eat the blue-green algae. Some of the rhinos are white. There's a giraffe called Rothschild, and the lions sleep in the trees. And there are also python and leopard. And I tell you what, if either of those species have been sipping from the same kooky juice as the others, I'm out of here. Nakuru is one of three shallow lakes in Africa's Great Rift Valley, home to all of the big five, as well as the rare white rhino. These are the white rhinos that were introduced into the park in the early 90s uh, for breeding pro uh, purposes. And has that been successful? It's been very successful. I mean, we see a number of babies out here now. Yes. But you have indigenous rhino here as well, don't you? We do have indigenous rhino here, which is called the black rhino. And it's uh, relatively smaller by about a ton. Just observing this crash of rhino family group, a couple of young, even though there are some smaller ones there, everything in the African bush seems to be large and hulking and prehistoric and stomping and huge. Is there anything that's delicate in the African bush? Here in Lake Nakuru, you will find your answer. Sure, the big five all reside here, but so too do dainty animals of the feathered kind. 500 species of them, in fact, making it a birder's paradise. What we're looking at here is the widow bird, so named because he's predominantly black, and the tail that he's dragging around is his sign of showing that he's ready for mating. Interestingly, he's chasing around the female, who is, uh, well, really rather plain. Then there are those gangly but somehow graceful giraffes. Here in Nakuru, they are predominantly of the rare Rothschild variety, distinguished by their darker coat. What are these two doing over here? Oh, those two are males that are tussling and uh, they're fighting. And this form of fighting is known as necking. Necking. So this is a, a territorial kind of joust that they're doing here? Uh, actually, they have uh, hierarchy issues. Right, so asserting their dominance. Asserting dominance. And how serious can these uh, fights get? It can be a fight to death. Traditionally, Nakuru was known for its flourishing flamingo numbers, but rising water levels in 2014 forced most of them to flee. Fortunately, they're slowly starting to return. And a phenomenon happening here in the Rift Valley Lakes is flooding. So in the last 10 years, we've been uh, experiencing a lot of flooding. So this flooding, uh, which is from the underground water system, uh, sort of dilutes the algae content in the, in the lake. So they eat the algae. In fact, that's what makes them sort that, of that is purple, what, pink. Uh, that's from the... Uh, spirulina, the protein that is found in the algae. Oh. So it's the blue-green algae gives them the pink yeah. colour. Yeah, go figure. <laughs> I remember reading about uh, the most unpredictable killer exactly. in the yeah. African jungle. Yes. What is that? That is the Cape Buffalo. That's the Cape Buffalo those, right there. The, those are Cape Buffaloes right there. Okay. Why yeah. are they so unpredictable? Uh, it's because they're very, uh, very smart and uh, very fast thinkers and they can charge very unpredictably. Terrific, they don't think twice. They don't think twice. 